And I cannot believe Nibali's come in and got that stage win. So, Condalo's gone back. Condalo's gone back. What's happening? He's completely broken. Condalo! 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 He's in a lot of pain. He's in a lot of trouble. He's getting on a lot of pain. What has happened to Condalo? And Alaphilippe has gone flying around that corner. How has he done that? He's broken away from Mike. He's going to get the win. He's got it. He's got his first Grand Tour win. Vamos, Canada. Vamos, Oh, Froome! Chris Froome! Chris Froome! Coming in for the win! Come on, Froome! And here's Condador! Condador is coming back! How is he doing this? How? Oh, Condador, here he is! What Froome's attacking again! Oh my god! What are we witnessing here? This is history! Chris Froome pedaling up in his high cadence style, comes through on the tail, coming up in the foam bend, bends it round, he accelerates, he does it, Chris Froome once again wins the stage, he is in red, he is leading the race, it's Chris Froome's to lose now. Chris Froome having an absolute stormer, over to you George. And with 50 kilometers to go on stage 11, guess who is leading the peloton? It's Christian Knees. What a hero, still going. Ian Stannard just tucked behind him in his low position. We've got the banana on the desk, and that is an apple as well. I'm trying to keep myself nice and fed. As the race moves on quietly and hypnotically in its usual manner towards the end, which is a grand finale on the top of the, the final climb, there is a small group of riders up the road with about a minute and a half from the Red Jersey group. And this group actually includes Bardet, who's really quite far down on the GC, uh, despite it coming third in the 2017 Tour de France in July, this July. And it's also got Darwin Atapuma in it, who's a, a Colombian rider, really good on the mountains, but hasn't quite managed to seal his Grand Tour win, as Sean Kelly, the ex-Tour de France winner and... Eurosport commentator keeps going on about that he cracks under pressure so we'll see what happens to them the race has been used to riding him in heats of about 38 degrees recently which is absolutely crazy and today there's been a drop but it hasn't been a small drop it's been quite an intense drop not only that there's also a lot of rain I'm trying to depict this in the pictures with this more sort of splashy loose style and I feel there's also a different mood in the peloton it feels more focused more locked down because they haven't got the the levity of the nice hot weather despite it being quite oppressive i think there's a kind of seriousness and a protective element to how the riders are feeling which is what i wanted to portray in this picture whether that's through the black or whether that's through the looseness of the shape or this sort of strange character on the left hand side which i think is quite prominent reminds you of like a picasso painting or something um shout out to myself <laughs> Nibali has been very quiet, yet there have been little flashes or segments of his ability, which came out in the stage win of stage four when he put the shark fin on his head, which is really cool. And we're seeing it here. He's chipping away at the GC. He's moved up today with Chavez losing a lot of time. Nibali now in second. And this is his first attack. He's doing something. A lot of the time with Froome, he puts people in a stalemate because they, they get worn out by the Team Sky's furious pace and their psychology gets broken. And I always said it was going to be the older guys, Nibali and Constor, with the race experience and the lack of... They won't get scared of Froome when he starts acting up. And so Nibali's had some guts and he's attacked, which I really appreciate. 
on the final part of this climb, which is kind of like a Mars or moonscape, really kind of sparse, crazy part of uh, the world, three riders are up ahead. Bade at Puma got caught by the GC guys who really amped it up and really put on the pace. The final three were this guy, Miguel Angel Lopez Moreno, and Froome and Nibali, who put on a really strong performance, dropping all the rest of the guys in these, these horrible conditions, showing their strength. And finally, it was the Colombian who made a bid for the line and pulled off up ahead, relatively comfortably it looked like. Uh, he had some really prominent calves, which I sadly didn't depict in this picture, which I really thought were awesome. And he won the stage. Obviously, Colombia goes wild. They're such uh, faithful and ebullient cycling fans. So that was great to get a win for them. Big movements in the GC after stage 11. Chavez can't take the horrible weather and the steep climbs. And he moves back to, what, two minutes, 33, behind Froome from 36. Nibali, the old veteran, doing really well under the conditions, moves up to second position, one minute 19 behind Froome. Consador down there, tucked in, into the shot. He moves from 13th position to 9th po <laughs> position at 3.55 back. That is a nectarine. This is day, whatever it is, of... This is an apple. The raw till fog... Melons. Finished? Finished yet? Okay, great. Okay, I can talk now, can I? Thank you very much. Uh, the Raw Till Forgus challenge, which is to eat raw food, so fruit for me, until four o'clock every day in August. I, I won't give you the full story here. Uh, long story short, is that I broke my back in 2009 and had a really crappy five years, six years afterwards. And I found that fruit was the best thing for my energy levels and a lot of other things. And my health just got a whole lot better since eating more fruit. So that's why I'm eating like this. In July, because I was working so hard, I didn't have time to eat fruit and shop. I just ate bread and spaghetti hoops, and I had a serious breathing difficulty the entire time. So I'm trying to turn around my health, and fruit is the way for me.